up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, alongside Rich Homie Sean, High Performance Nutrition. You know, we've uh, we've talked about this a few times. Um, we talk about it a lot, and that's bad days. And we all have bad days. You know those days that you're just not clicking on all cylinders, something's weird, you're making mistakes, even if you're trying not to make mistakes, we all have bad days. Seems like the world is against you. Yeah, and, and Sean, like what we were talking about just earlier, like you have your bad days. Now, what do you do? when you're having a bad day to overcome that bad day and also to bounce back and make sure that not every day of the week is going to be a bad day. Well, yeah, like you said, sometimes you have those days where you feel like everything that can go wrong is going wrong. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's kind of like, why is this happening to me type of a feeling, but you have to get yourself out of that mindset immediately. And what you have to focus on is your objectives for the day. And you can't allow the negativity of the moment to clout your decision and your judgment for the future. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because people make poor decisions for their future based on the negativity of a moment, mm -hmm. which is so stupid. You know, it makes no sense. It'd be like, you know, I don't know, ending a relationship or something like that based on one little fight that didn't make any sense, right? Yeah. So uh, you have to do things that make sense in the long run, whatever's the best long run decision. So if you have your day and it's not going very well, you still need to accomplish your objectives for the day. So one thing people have told me because I've been you know, really sick, but still I'm, I'm making calls, I'm doing emails, I'm going to my meetings and people are like, oh my gosh, how could you not let this affect you? And my answer is how could you let it affect you? No. How could you let something like that stop you from achieving your goals of the ultimate, you know, uh, of the ultimate plan? Yeah, and we've gone over this. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but we actually talked about this yesterday at dinner. Um, you ever get those bad training days? It's like, that was a bad day. I didn't make any gains and I beg to differ. You know, here's the thing. No one's ever made gains off of one workout. Yeah. No one's ever paid. No, let's say, you know what? I think me, you, Mike, Mike Rashid and, and those guys and big Rob and big Rob did it. We're all very motivational and awesome. People want to train with us, but I guarantee you this, you might be sore for the next 12 weeks, but you made no gains off that one day. Now, if you continue to train really hard and throw in those extra amazing just boom days or those 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 variable days where you throw in the extra hard training you're going to make gains but you're looking at mike's 38 years old i'm 30 i'm 34 you know he you're pushing 30 you're not 30 yet I'm but 42 yeah he's gh but but they i mean are. you know <laughs> both i stack them but anyway so nonetheless it's like you have your um you're looking at years and years of us doing those training systems. So we're showing you a tool, but don't think that that one day is going to equal your best goal. So while you might've only hit 40 to 60% of your total training, optimal, optimal training zone, where you're hitting it hard, you're getting all your max weights, you're PRing. Hell, sometimes you go to the gym. The other day I went, I usually get like 315 for like 10, 15 reps on bench. Now that I've been doing them like near last in my workout. I got two or three reps and I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with me? I realized I was traveling a lot and I was, I had a lot of personal stress going on and my daughter had soccer camp and I'm like, you know what that was, but I still didn't miss the workout because what you're looking at is your long-term goal is to get bigger and leaner. For me, my goal, honestly, my goals right now are probably different than yours because I'm pretty content. I'm always looking to get bigger and better and I'm looking to increase my weights. Right now I'm looking to improve my bench press, my squat, my deadlift and my overall look. But honestly, a 240 at my height, I'm perfectly content. Yeah. But for most of you who let's say weigh 160 and are decently lean, your goal is to get up to 210, 215 or hell, even 170. Your goal is to make that and that workout will be another step towards reaching that goal because you made those small incremental gains. It's a, it's a journey of a thousand miles made up of a million steps, mm -hmm. right? So you can't judge it off one day, one workout, one session, one set. No, it's a, it's an, you are the accumulation of all that you have done. Yeah. If you look at like, even everybody thinks we've done videos on this and I'm going to bring it up because it's something that really upsets me and probably you as an employer, you got the new generation, the millennials. And I just actually, I sent you the article on entrepreneur magazine about it. And they literally graduate a lot of them. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not saying everyone. I know they, oh, I'm a millennial. And I'm the, no, a lot of people come out of college with that degree thinking they're going to make $125,000 with a company car and health insurance, life insurance, 401k matching plan and everything because they got a piece of paper that's a degree. When I graduated college, when I started my career at Weeder, I was making $24,000 a year before commission, which thank God I was able to earn extra money in California. $24,000 even in 1999 in California, that equates to about $12 a year. 
any other place. <laughs> and I lived on it, but I knew that I had to pay my dues. And the degree was just to get my foot in the door. Right. Once your foot's in the door, you got to bring the other foot in the door, your leg, you got to get this. And then you got to start climbing that corporate ladder. Right. And there were bad days along the way. Tons of bad days. You know how many times I woke up and I'm like, I couldn't pay my bills. I couldn't afford food. I was eating literally my favorite meal at the time because it was cheap. Um, I'd buy the value pack of matzah. You know, unleavened bread, the Jewish shit, yeah. and the cheap peanut butter, because it had it was a complete protein source. Put them together, and I'd eat those all day. It, it was about two dollars in food a day, but that was my thing. And Chef Boyardee, that's what I ate. I woke up. I remember. I'm thinking, I'm not going to make it in life, and I didn't have parents to fall back on, but I had no choice. Where am I going to live? You know, my mom was had her problems. My dad was on his deathbed. Literally, I had to make it. But that's the thing. It's like you need to just step out of your comfort zone, whether you have a bad day or not and get out there and make it. I don't care if you have mommy and daddy to go run back to. If you have a bad day, if you have a bad week or a bad month, at the end of the day, if you keep working hard, sooner or later, there will be a break. I've never heard of anybody who keeps working hard and diligent that doesn't have that break, whether someone notices you or whatever. Never, yeah, I've never seen, Never. I don't know a single person that is not successful that has worked for a number of years at something diligently. It's impossible. It just doesn't. It's, I've never seen it. We all have bad. I mean, we've all had rough times. I've some more than others. Yeah. I've had a shitty. I've had some shitty times. But there's other people who, if you read, I, I encourage you to read up on Johnny Cochran. Talk about bad days. Grew up in South Central. Fucking just, but made it. He slept in. He was known. He'd work 24 hour days. He'd sleep in his office most of the time. Yeah. The guy was a workhorse. Whether you like his politics and his legal views or not. He is a testament to the American dream. And if you work hard enough, you can get at it. But bad days happen. Bad weeks happen. Bad months happen. Fuck, bad years happen. Yeah, in the scheme of a, a 70 to 80 year life. Yeah. What is that? You know, a it's year nothing. that you wouldn't consider optimal. The point is, on those days or on those weeks, you have to just execute. You have to do your job, whatever it is. If, if, you're, if we're talking about the gym, it's the workout. If we're talking about a, a job or a career, it's whatever your task set is for that day or that week or that month. You have to execute it. You have to get through it. And you have to just continue working because it will subside. It I, will subside. I remember, and just to bring it back to training, because I know when we do videos like this, I'll get occasional comments that say, this is a training channel. Focus on training. Okay. Because we're not trying to improve our lives. We just want to lift heavy weights and have abs, right? That's, That's all, all we all care about. What else is there? No, but here's the deal. I remember this like a month and a half ago. I went to the gym with Katie. And I felt like shit. I was tired, run down. I'd had two hours of sleep for the last three days. I was just, Cammy had shit going on. Thomas was having issues. Preston wasn't sleeping through the night. And she's like, how are you even training? And I just, and I had to travel. And when I traveled, I didn't sleep. It's like, how are you even here? I'm like... This is when I, this is when you test yourself mentally. I might not make the greatest gains physically, but at the end of the day, I think Mike Rashid's the biggest proponent of this. When you're in the, and CT, of course, when you're in the gym, you're not just training this, you're training this. And like you paraphrased um, Greg Plitt once, we do it, we, we train hard in here, we suffer in here, so we don't have to suffer out there. Is that how it went? Yeah, more or less. So that's that. Just If you have a bad day, work through it. Work through it. And, that'll and, if make you have a bad, and, and if you have a bad day every day, if you're trying to say that, there's something wrong with your, the setup of your life that you need to address. I mean, think about that. Yeah. Because there are some people who are like, it just every day is a bad day. Every day is terrible. And it's like, that makes no fucking sense. Or maybe sense. your outlook on life is yeah. pessimistic. Like, every time I think my body's in pain, like, every oh, my legs are so sore from leg day. You know how many people I've, I've met personally who are paraplegics throughout my life who wish they could fucking squat? Yeah. Who can't because they got in a car accident, they have some genetic issue, or they fell wrong playing football, or they got hit wrong, or they had an accident on a boat. They want to do what you're complaining about being sore from. Yeah. Just remember that next time. And, uh, you know, don't let bad days get in your way. So while you might read, I remember reading Flex Magazine, Ronnie Coleman had a quote. You know, Ronnie and I are pretty good friends now. And Ronnie said, if, you're having to, if you just don't feel like training, just don't go. Just go home and eat. If that was the case with my job and my workload, I would never train. <laughs> I would literally, I don't feel like going to the gym every day. I don't. When I get there, a switch goes off. I know it's going to go off because I make it go off. But how many times in the last month have you been like, oh, man, I got all this work to do. I don't know how I'm going to fit in the gym, but you do. Yeah, but we do. It's not always going to be fucking butterflies and, and you know, bonbons, you know. 
I gotta quit saying. I keep fucking up that statement. But changing the, the latter part. It's butterflies and something. Fuck. Bonbons work. Yeah. But that's it, guys. Um, Butterfingers. <laughs> Butterfingers are delicious. Yeah. All right, guys. Be sure to check in. Uh, motivational shit. Um, honestly, Sean and I, you know, you look at a guy. I've known him since he was in his teens. I've seen him grow through his career. And honestly, he's known me since I was only a couple years older in my early 20s. Um, so we've seen each other grow and we could state that here's different paths of success you can take. And while we both came from different upbringings, the end result is we both worked the, the key component while we had different upbringings. The key component is that we both worked our ass off Yeah. and none of this shit was given to us. And that's that. All right, guys, keep working hard, set goals, reach them, beat them. And, uh, well, that's not a game. <laughs>